Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and thank you so much for inviting me to the Living Muslim Show. My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome to this very, very important episode. Inshallah, we are going to discuss something that has become really widespread and alarming. And so I wanted all the parents, all the religious leaders and educators who are watching us today, not only to listen attentively and make notes, but rather to bring even their children uh, right now to watch this episode and uh, start making real notes so that you can, inshallah, tackle this uh, important topic. What are we going to discuss, inshallah, about? We are going to discuss about pornography addiction. Now, why did I choose this topic? My brothers and sisters in Islam, according to experts, pornography has become one of the most dangerous drug of our time. Yes, you have heard it right. It is like drug. It is even more dangerous than cocaine and heroin because a cocaine addict or a heroin addict or any of those addicts who are using hard drugs, you can quickly detect them. You can quickly recognize and identify them because uh, of their uh, physical, uh, physical weakness, maybe they can commit crimes, they can steal, they can even kill in order for them to have these kind of drugs. But a porno pornography addict might be a religious leader himself. She might be a hijabi or a niqabi sister, but you can't detect them. There is no any withdrawal symptom that you can notice. And that's why most of the people who would come asking for help, they would say that I have never... Uh, said this to anyone before. I have been watching porn for 20, 30 uh, years, 15 years, 12 years, and you are the first one I'm telling this to. So it is really painful secret that is kept by addicts for, for, for many years, and that's why it is the right time for us to discuss it in public. I know that there are many uh, Muslims around the world who are very conservative. They don't want to talk about this. But if we don't talk about it, uh, about it, my brothers and sisters, how could we find a solution to it? So I believe that it is the right time for all the parents, all the educators and religious leaders to start studying the science behind uh, uh, pornography addiction and how can we offer the necessary help for our brothers and sisters who are addicted to it. And yes, there are Muslims who are addicted to pornography and we have to be very honest about it and we have to uh, be compassionate and, and, and loving and kind to them so that they can, inshallah, break free from uh, the addiction cycle of pornography. Now, why pornography really is an addictive thing? Number one, my brothers and sisters in Islam, it's accessibility. It is so easy to access pornography nowadays. 20 years back or 25 years back, for anyone to watch porn, he would really go through a lot of hassle in order to obtain a VHS tape or a magazine. And in order to watch that tape or to uh, go through this magazine, he have to hide, he have to go somewhere, he have to wait for his parents to sleep or something like that in order to watch. And that's why it was less addictive. But nowadays, just on your cell phone, my brothers and sisters, you can have access to these uh, filthy images. So number one, it's, it's accessibility. Number one, affordability. Years before, you have to buy the tape or you have to rent the tape or you have to buy the magazine. Now, all you need to do is to just click on your computer and here you go. You can have millions of websites of that nature. So it's accessibility, it's affordability, it's uh, 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 the aggressive nature of porn. Uh, the, the porn industry intends to make porn so exciting to an extent that actually they go beyond the norm, that these things are never happen in real uh, intimacy, in real sexual intercourse between husbands and wives. And the danger of that is, my brothers and sisters, that when a husband watch porn and see the images of the girls uh, uh, exploited in these movies, and then he look back at his wife, she's not the same as uh, this uh, porn actress, then he started to lose interest in, in the real lawful intimacy. That's how uh, uh, porn becomes addictive. And the last point is, it is anonymous. Like Nobody can notice, as we said, that you are watching porn on your cell phone or on your laptop, and that creates the addiction cycle. How it works? Now, the science would tell us that there is a, a lot of chemical reactions. No, I don't want to go technical for now for this brief episode because basically this is a part of a whole day workshop which I intend inshallah to conduct in different 
different parts of the world, inshallah, to help those who are trapped in the cycle of pornography addiction, inshallah. So briefly, there are chemical reactions that normally pops in the brain whenever you like something. And one of these chemical uh, reactions is dopamine, one of them. And it happens that dopamine is actually responsible for our happiness and responsible for our addiction. So for example, if you tasted sugar and you liked the sugar so much, it would register immediately in your brain that so-and-so likes sugar. And so the dopamine's job is to remind you it's time for sugar now. It's time to eat sugar. And this exactly happened when you watch porn. Once you watch porn, the trigger uh, would be popped up in your brain and the dopamine would be produced. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created this dopamine for the same purpose, for your enjoyment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you are with, with your wife, uh, uh, you know, uh, enjoying the lawful relationship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala produced this chemical reaction in a very ca well calculated portion. But when you watch these things behind screens, billah, it is produced in huge amount. So it disturbed the system, and that's why you keep going, watching again and again. So it starts by what? A trigger. A trigger. You watch something. You did not protect your gaze. And that's why the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, advised us to lower our gaze. The Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Tell to the believing men to lower their gaze and guard their modesty. So whenever you, you, you walk down the street and something triggered you, you have to immediately divert your gaze. And the same applies to the sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Tell to the believing women to lower their gaze and to guard their modesty. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, also informed us that the gaze is an arrow from the arrows of shaitan. That's what shaitan wanted you to end up doing, watching porn wal-ayadu billah. And then the problem with porn is that it accelerates. The things that you used to watch five years back, it's not exciting as uh, it's not exciting anymore. So you want something different. So there are some people who will come to me and tell me, brother, I am not a gay, I am not a homosexual, yet I started to watch these things because I'm not getting the pleasure that I used to when I watched the normal uh, you know, sex between man and woman. So it, it, it makes you act in an abnormal way sometimes. Subhanallah, and at the end, you will have to look for a prostitution house. You will have to act out. So a trigger, and number two is a justification. This is the cycle of pornography addicts. The justification is, you will start saying, it is better than zina. It is better than going out and hunting for a prostitute. So watching porn is okay. So you will justify your action. So a trigger justification and then the action and after the action and the pleasure expected you will start feeling terribly regret you know and and feeling that you how i wish i never uh, had access to this to these things regret and then comes next is false quitting there are some people after they watch and they get the pleasure that they wanted they say from now on i'm not gonna watch porn anymore and that's what we call false quitting because afterwards if you do not protect your gaze you will relapse and you will have, uh, you will watch again and again, and you will, you will keep yourself in that cycle for many, many years. I will just tell you one story of a person who approached me, and he told me that he had an access for porn for 43 years, when porn was really difficult to access at that time. He was a photographer, he used to take pictures of naked people, and he used to pleasure himself to death, until he reached the point after marrying uh, 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 his, his beloved wife and having children from her, three daughters and a son, his daughter caught him in the act. His daughter caught him watching porn. And when he came to my office, he said, what? I have never seen my family for three years because of porn. Although he get rid of watching porn, alhamdulillah, but the consequence was terribly bad, not seeing his family. My brothers and sisters in Islam, this is the cycle of porn which many people are trapped in for, for many, many years, and it is time to take an action. So what are the tips that we wanted to uh, discuss today, inshallah, in order for you to get uh, on the path of recovery, inshallah. But I have to also warn you that these tips that I'm, I'm going to discuss may not apply for everyone. It actually depends on your level of addiction. So some people, uh, these tips doesn't work with, some people... These tips might be helpful, but they are very essential. So what is tip number one? Tip number one is to seek Allah's help. 
I have read over 150 books regarding this subject, my brothers and sisters. But I haven't seen any book that says, seek Allah's help. Because most of the books written on this subject are from secular uh, point of view, from non-religious point of view. So they don't really mention the point of seeking Allah's help. But in Islam, subhanAllah, the power of dua has been neglected, my brothers and sisters. Seek Allah's help. Big him, you know, uh, in your salah, big him in your dua. Don't say, I'm filthy, I'm sinner. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not respond anyway. Don't ever uh, give hope. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna Allah yaghfir dhunuba jami'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forgiving all sins. Allah is oft forgiving, most merciful. لا تقنطوا من رحمة الله. Don't ever despair in the mercy from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So don't ever say Allah hates me, Allah doesn't like me, Allah will not respond to my dua. Keep on asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help you get rid of this problem. Uh, according to Ibrahim alayhi salam, the Prophet Ibrahim, as recorded in the Quran, he said uh, that when I get sick, it is Allah who cures me. Allah's name is Ash-Shafi, the one who cures. So seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's help. Number two, as I told you, I read many, many books regarding the subject. All of them agreed that you have to tell someone. You can't keep it secret anymore. But be careful, you have to tell someone whom you trust. You have to be careful whom are you to going to tell this story to. Yeah, so if you, if you are a husband, maybe you can tell your wife because normally uh, our sisters will be patient and they will uh, try to, you know, help you out with this problem. But if you are a wife, it's not, you know, advisable to go and tell your husband because maybe he would react differently. You know, our natures are so different. Men are more jealous than women. And so if the husband comes to know that uh, his wife is watching porn or addicted to pornography, it might create a very bad consequence. So you may tell a very close friend, you may tell a coach, a professional coach, a counselor, and he would help you, inshallah, to go uh, about the uh, curing journey, inshallah. Number three, eliminate all pornographic uh, uh, pictures, images from your computer. Even you start, uh, you know, staying away from TV itself, from, you know, TV series, Hollywood, Bollywood, and all these things, because uh, many people think that pornography is only about two people having sex, but rather even a girl wearing inappropriate clothes can be a kind of pornography trigger to those who are addicted. So stay away from any of uh, these movies, uh, or else you will be relapsed again and again, and the relapse feels so bad. Many people will say the guilt is so heavy now, and that makes them reach to a level of depression, deep de depression, my brothers and sisters. I have a brother who came to me, he's 18 years old boy. And the first sentence he uttered was what? I wanted to commit suicide. A Muslim wanted to commit suicide, my brothers and sisters, because of porn. Because he reached to the point that he's, uh, he kept on watching porn for six hours every night for three continuous years. Alhamdulillah, now he's doing well. Alhamdulillah, now he's porn free. He, he, he was successful in getting rid of uh, of, of pornography, but he is suffering from a very severe disease called uh, erectile dysfunction. He don't he, he don't have the ability to get married anymore and function normally uh, because as a result of wasting all his the best uh, time of his life, the youth uh, watching porn. So be careful, my brothers and sisters. Uh, number four is to divide your goals into small goals. So for example, some people, as I said, there is a false quitting period where you said, I'm, ne I'm never going to watch porn anymore. This doesn't work in most cases. Instead, you say what? Okay, today is Thursday. I'm not going to watch porn until the next Thursday. So you have one week to stay away from porn. And when is day night when it reaches, inshallah, you start making another small goal. Okay, alhamdulillah, I've been uh, away from porn for one week now, so I'm going to stop for another three days another four days, another three days, another four days. So whenever you reach to your goal, you give yourself another small goal. So divide your goal into small goals. Number five, do not ever punish yourself when you fall because you will. You will relapse again and again. Pornography addiction, my brothers and sisters, is very compulsive, is very powerful. The people actually who are addicted to porn, they do not want to watch porn. That's, that's the thing that we have to understand. And that's why I'm, I'm advising my teachers, my scholars of the deen, to really be considerate when someone come and tell you that I'm addicted to porn or I'm watching porn and I can't get rid of it. 
instead of telling them haram, 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 which is, of course, it's important to inform them that it is haram, but that in most cases don't work because they're addicted. They can't help themselves to stay away from porn. So we need to really study the science behind this addiction in order to offer them some help. Remember the story of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, when a man came to him and told him, allow me to commit adultery. You see, this, is, this was a, a, a person who was considered to be uh, among the best of all generations, one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Now the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, didn't tell him, didn't tell him it's haram. He didn't tell him, don't you know that the Quran said about adultery that this is the punishment and so on and so forth. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did not get angry at the man, but rather he told him, أَتَرْضَاهُ لِأُمِّكْ Do you accept this to happen to your mother? Do you accept this to happen to your sister, to your daughter, and so on and so forth? And the man in every question, he would answer by saying, No, I don't accept this to happen to my family members from, for my loved ones. And then the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, started to reason with the man by saying, Other people too don't like this to happen to their parents, to their mothers, to their daughters, and so on and so forth. And the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, because he was sent as a mercy to mankind, he did something extra. He placed his hand over the man's heart and he made a dua for him. Ya Allah, oh Allah, remove the love of woman from his heart, meaning unlawful woman from his heart. And after that, the man was good to go on the path of purity. So sometimes we need to tackle the subject not from a spiritual viewpoint, but rather from a scientific uh, uh, viewpoint it would work especially when it is addictive uh, behavior number six my brothers and sisters who are addicted who notice now that uh, what I have been discussing uh, in the past few minutes that yes I am suffering from this addiction every time I, I, I promise myself never to watch again and yet I can't help myself and I go again and again and watch porn so what I should do develop new habits Monitor yourself, when do I normally watch porn? Most people will say that I watch porn past midnight, like, you know, when everybody is asleep. Now, the, 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 the key here in order to break that habit is what? Is to sleep early. You start to develop the habit of sleeping early. And don't tell me, uh, you know, I can't sleep before 2, I can't sleep before 3 a.m., I have tried a lot. Don't tell me that because you are talking to someone who used to sleep uh, at Fajr time, yani, People would, would go to the masjid for Fajr and I would go to sleep during Fajr and I would wake up during Maghrib time because I used to sing. I, go, I used to go to bars. So subhanAllah, habits can change. The power of habit uh, uh, is scientifically proven that it can uh, work. It can be adjusted. So just try to shift your habits. See what you are normally, when do you watch porn and break that cycle. And if you uh, are able successfully to uh, practice this habit for 40 days, as psychologists would say, you will be able to get rid of uh, porn, inshallah. Number seven, be honest in seeking the cure. Like if you have already spoken to someone, a professional coach or a, a close friend, always tell them whenever you relapse. So when you relapse, always tell them that I have relapsed, what can I do? And then they will go, uh, inshallah, and give you more tips or more uh, different curing tips, inshallah, that can work with you, but don't lie to yourself and don't lie to them. And number eight is don't be fooled, as we said earlier, by false quitting. When you quit porn for two months, three months, don't say, hey, alhamdulillah, I got rid of uh, porn finally. Don't do that. Don't be happy. Continue with your plan. Continue with the habits that you have developed, whether it is sport, swimming, sleeping early, reading uh, beneficial books. Continue with this habit for long time. I would say that if you are able successfully to shift your habit and never to watch porn for one year, then, only then we can say that, alhamdulillah, you have reached the path of uh, purity. Number nine, my brother and sister, and this is something very, very important. Remind yourself of the negative consequences of porn. Uh, you know, even I myself, I put a, a reminder on my laptop that says what? Allah is watching me. Can you imagine whenever you open your laptop or even your cell phone, you look at your cell phone, you see a, a, a reminder says Allah is watching you. Be careful. How could you watch porn on a laptop that says Allah is watching you? You are not alone. Don't be, when you lock all doors, when you lock all windows and think that, think that you're alone because your parents are not around, don't be fooled. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-raqib is watching you. 
So make these reminders and remember, you might die while watching porn, my brothers and sisters in Islam. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said what? That a man will be resurrected on the day of judgment upon the last thing that he had performed. So imagine with me you're resurrecting to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while watching porn. Can you imagine? How, what will you explain? How, how will you explain this to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The Prophet Muhammad said, deeds will be judged by its endings. Whatever you have done at the end of your life will determine your destiny, whether Jannah or Hell, وَلَعْيَادُ billah. So remember the consequence of uh, watching porn, because I know of examples, wallahi, uh, from the city where I live now, Hong Kong city, I know of an example of people who died while clicking on these channels, وَلَعْيَادُ billah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. Ameen. And last point I have, here is, uh, you have to learn. Now this is for parents, for educators, and even for those who are addicted. You have to learn about this filthy industry, about those people who have actually produced the insultive movie about our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. They are the same people who are producing porn. So you are supporting the products. You are actually making them rich by just one click. So learn about this industry, and uh, after you learn, raise awareness yourself. I'm actually calling people to join my team so that we can, inshallah, help those who are addicted. And even if you yourself is addicted, when you get involved in these programs, inshallah, to break free those who are addicted to porn, you yourself, inshallah, on the long run will be benefited. Last word for those who are addicted. I wanted to say that my brothers and sisters in Islam, you are not really a morally sick person. You are not a bad person. You are not your addiction. Your addiction is not yourself. I know that you have now developed something uh, like, you know, you, you are struggling between two personality. One person is telling you, watch porn anyway. And the other person within yourself is telling you it's haram. We can't do that. We can't say Allahu Akbar in our salah. And these images cross our minds. How could we focus on salah while we are actually watching porn? Well, ayadu billah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save our children. So you're not a bad person. I want you to know that you're not alone in this addiction. There are millions of people, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, who are suffering from, from this addiction. So don't give hope. Don't give uh, up hope. Uh, my brothers and sisters in Islam, I am offering this service for free. So those who wish to contact me to get more tips, more reading materials, or even coaching one-on-one, -on -one, Inshallah, you, you are free to do so. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our ummah from falling into this trap. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Jazakumullahu khayran. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.